Hello, uh, so this will be the second uh, lecture video for Chem 150 review for this week. Uh, it's going to be about preparing solutions. So as I said uh, in the last video, preparing solutions is going to be really important for you, particularly in the lab. Uh, and you'll want to remember what molarity means and all of that. So we'll be talking about that and relating it to stoichiometry in the next video as well. So what I want to point out first here is some uh, some diagrams of glassware. What you'll be using to make solutions accurately is this type of glassware. Uh, above my head right here, right there, is a volumetric flask. Notice that it's wide on the bottom and gets smaller in, in, the, in the stem, and it has one mark. And that one mark is the one volume that it's of solution that it's meant to make. So we'll be using those in the lab as we go forward. Uh, next to me here is a volumetric pipette, and those also uh, get large. Uh, they get large in the middle there, and they also have just one line. That line is up in the narrow part, in the narrow part right here, uh, and that one line it gives you a very precise volume. Uh, and you will usually pipette out of a beaker. Just as a side note, it's Usually not a good idea to stick a pipette down one of these makes it really easy to bump it over. When you make a solution, you usually want to pour it out into a beaker. Okay, so, oops, um, as I said, yeah, completing your lab experiments will involve the, uh, the use of pipettes and volumetric flasks to make solution. Uh, sometimes, uh, given the available glassware that we have or the dilution that we need to do, we'll have to do a serial dilution. And this might be something that's kind of new to this class. So they don't tend to talk about it much in Chem 150. So I'll show you a, a serial dilution problem and you'll, I'll have a couple in your uh, homework this week. Uh, you'll need, in these kinds of dilutions, you'll need to dilute a solution and then dilute it again. And so the, you can dilute, in, you know, do this second, first and second dilution in a few different ways as long as you get to the desired concentration that you need at the end. Uh, so <clears throat> the result is that it usually takes a little bit of guesswork to get it right, but I'll teach you how to take some of the guessing out of the guesswork there. Uh, if you're making a solution by diluting another solution, you'll want to use M1V1 equals M2V2. So uh, how will we prepare a solution? by dilution. Uh, I think this is best demonstrated with an example. So here's an example. Assume you have the following glassware. You've got a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, one to 10 milliliter volumetric pipettes, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 milliliter volumetric pipettes, which is a pretty normal solution in the lab. Uh, how could you make 100 milliliters of 0 0.0010 molar sodium chloride from 0.4 molar stock solution. Okay, so we could use M1V1 equals M2V2 here, here to figure out the volume of the stock solution that we'll need. So we'll call the volume of the stock solution V1 and we'll call its molarity M1. And what we wanna know is what volume of the stock solution we'll need to pipette and put into our volumetric flask in order to make 100 milliliters of this uh, solution. So we're using M1V1 equals M2V2. We want to solve for V1, so we divide both sides here by M1. We divide here by M1, here by M1. We put those there. On this side, our M1s will cancel like that, and we're left with, we're left with V1 on the left side uh, equals, and on the right side, M2V2 over M1. And so now we're going to want to plug in our, our uh, molarities and our volumes. The 2 is the diluted solution. So here our molarity 2 is 0 0.010 molar. Our volume of that that we want to make is 100 milliliters. So we put 0 0.01 molar, that's M2 here. The volume we want is 100 milliliters. And then the molarity that we want is 0.5. Or, or the molarity that we're starting with, rather, the molarity of the stock solution is 0.4 molars. So we're going to put that right down here. All right. 
And so our molarities here will cancel and we'll get milliliters. And what we get is 0 0.25 milliliters. We have a problem here. Uh, the problem is that we don't have any volumetric pipettes that are capable of measuring a volume that small. Also, measure, trying to dilute so much in one dilution leads to a lot of error because it's really hard to accurately measure such a small volume and then you're diluting it into 100 milliliters. That's not something that we want to do or we can realistically do given the glassware. So this is a, a situation that calls for a... Um, <clears throat> calls for a serial dilution. And so we're going to want to start to think about how we're going to do this first dilution. And so we're going to do a dilution here. We don't have a pipette that small. We have to do a serial dilution. So let's start to plan out how we'll do a first dilution and then a second dilution. OK, so going back to the problem, we're starting with 0.4 molar solution. So what we could do is we could take the 0.4 molar solution and we could dilute it to something that's like a factor of 10 or 100 away from the 0.01. And that's usually a smart way to try to approach this. Uh, that's definitely something that, that can, can get you there more easily. Uh, so we can try to dilute 0.4 molar to 0.1 molar first. That will be 100 times more concentrated than the solution we want. But uh, it's usually easier to dilute in terms of tens and hundreds, especially if we have 100 milliliter volumetric flask and 1 and 10 milliliter volumetric pipettes. So that's a, a common strategy to use for this kind of problem. So we're going to try to dilute 0.4 to 0.1. So our new M2 is 0.1. And our M1 is still 0.4 molar. We're going to make 100 milliliters of this 0.1 molar to start. So we're going to use M1 V1 equals M2 V2 again. Again, we're looking for V1, the volume of our 0.4 molar solution that we want. We cancel the molarity one. Whoops. Uh-oh. We cancel the molarity one, uh, and we get V V1 equals M2 V2 over M1 just like before. But this time, our M2 is not 0 0.001 molar. It's just 0 0.1 molar. We're going to put that right there, 0 0.1 molar. And we're going to make 100 milliliters of this solution. So that will be the volume of that. We're still starting with our 0.4 molar there. Okay, And molarities will cancel here. We get milliliters. So this tells us we would need 25 milliliters. That's actually a volume that we could realistically pipette. We could pipette with 10 milliliters twice, and then we could use a 5 milliliter pipette and get 5 milliliters. So we can actually pipette this volume, and it's not too small. Uh, so that makes this a, a decent way uh, uh, to do this. So again, there's more than one way we could do this. We could have started by making a, you know, a, 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 another another vol another molarity of solution. We could have tried to make, uh, you know. 0.04. We could have tried to make 0.04. That would have worked too. Sure. Uh, so, but we, we went for 0.1 and this seems to work. So we pipette 25 milliliters using two tens and one five milliliter pipette of the 0.4 molar sodium chloride into a volumetric flask. And here's the process you use realistically when you do this. You fill the flask to the line with water. That gives makes the volume 100 milliliters and you invert at least 10 times. So in your homework, I'm going to ask you to describe this whole process for me as well. Now you will have 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution. So we've got the 0.1 molar sodium chloride. Now we're going to dilute that in order to make a more dilute solution. So we've got the same problem here, just copied over. But now we can make a 0 0.001 molar solution from the 0 0.1 molar solution that we made. And it's a factor of 100 difference. You could probably tell. It's pretty easy to tell uh, <clears throat> uh, here. Whoops. Uh, let me fix that, actually. Sorry. I have one extra zero in there by accident. I want to make 0 0.01 molar, not 0 0.001. Okay. 
All right. And uh, so now we're going to do the same process. We want to know this is going to be our, our uh, stock solution now instead of the 0.4 molar. So we want to know how much, what volume of that do we need? So we divide by molarities here, the molarities cancel, molarity one. We get our volume of this one that we need will be molarity two, which in this case is 0.01 molar, times volume two, which is, we're gonna make 100 milliliters of it using our 100 milliliter volumetric flask. And our molarity one is gonna be 0.1 molars. That's what we're starting with here. So how much of that will we need, volume one? We'll need one milliliter, but we do have a one milliliter volumetric pipette. So we can pipette one milliliter, put it into the 100 milliliter volumetric flask, point one milliliter the point one molar solution, put it into the 100 milliliter volumetric flask, fill the flask to line with water and invert at least 10 times. Now we will have 100 milliliters of 0 0.001 molar sodium chloride. So that is how you perform a serial dilution calculation. You dilute once and then you take that diluted solution and you dilute again. Uh, both times we're doing dilution so we can use M1V1 equals M2V2. Okay, so that's how you make a solution by diluting another solution. And we chose a kind of harder case where we had to do a serial dilution given the glassware that we had. What about if we need to prepare a solution by dissolving a solid? So if we have a solid that we're making a solution from, then what will we do? Well, here's an example of that. Describe how to make 25 milliliters of 0.6 molar solution of lithium chloride from solid lithium chloride, which is LiCl. Okay. Of course, you should be able to figure that out based on the nomenclature that we just did. All right. Uh, so here, what we, we're not going to use M1V1 equals M2V2. What we need to know is actually how many moles of, solid, of lithium chloride we need. Then we can figure out how many grams of solid lithium chloride we'll have to weigh out to make this solution. So solids are weighed. The way we're going to do is we're going to weigh the solid, place in the volumetric flask, dissolve it in, in a little bit of water, and then dilute. And so we need to know how much solid to weigh out. Fortunately, we have the volume and the molarity. So you should be able to get the moles from this. Remember, molarity means moles per liter. However, our volume here is in milliliters not in liters. Our plan is going to be, we're going to take the milliliters and convert them to liters using one liter is a thousand milliliters. Then we'll take the liters of solution and we'll convert those to moles of lithium chloride using the molarity, moles per liter. Then we'll take the moles of lithium chloride and convert that to how many grams of lithium chloride molar mass for lithium chloride we'd have to figure it out to do that it's 6.94 grams per lithium mole of lithium 35.45 grams per mole of chlorine atoms so the total is 42.39 grams so we're starting with our milliliters of solution so we put that write that down right at the beginning 25 milliliters okay and then we're going to convert to liters. So we want to make sure that on the bottom, we have something with milliliters because we want the milliliters to cancel. And we want to relate that to liters. The relationship is 1000 milliliters equals liter. That way our milliliters will cancel here for liters. Okay, now, uh, we want to convert moles of lithium chloride to, or liters of lithium chloride to moles. The molarity is the moles per liter. Before we do anything though, we know liters are gonna go on the bottom, liters of solution. I'm saying specifically liters, yes, liters of solution. And it's 0.6 
moles of lithium chloride per liter of solution. So that way our liters cancel here. Oh, my other liter didn't cancel, but liters will cancel here. And we'll have 0.6 moles of lithium chloride. Finally, we want to cancel the moles and get grams. So we're going to make sure that moles of lithium chloride is on the bottom here so it can cancel. Moles of lithium chloride will cancel and we'll get grams of lithium chloride. One mole of lithium chloride is 42.39 grams of lithium chloride. So now we should calculate this out. I'll bring up my calculator. So remember when you calculate it out, just press anything on the bottom, press divide, anything on the top, press times. So 25 divide by 1000 times 0 0.6 times 42.39. That equals 0 0.63585. We should look at our sig figs here. Uh, we're just multiplying and dividing so we can count sig figs. The 25.0 has three sig figs. The 0 0.6 has two, 0 0.60 the six and the zero is significant. 42.39 has four. Of course, we got as many as we wanted to from the periodic table. And so we should round here to two sig figs. So it will be 0 0.64 grams of lithium chloride. Okay, so that's how you figure out how much you have to weigh out. And then you uh, weigh out 0 0.64 grams of lithium chloride. You place it into the 25 milliliter volumetric flask. Since we're making 25 milliliters of solution, we need to use a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. You add a small amount of water to dissolve the solid and shake it around a little bit. Then you fill the volumetric flask with a line and you invert 10 times. And uh, then you will have. 25 milliliters of 0.6 molar lithium chloride solution. And so that's how you prepare solutions. Uh, if you look at uh, part two of the homework, there will be a couple of dilution problems and solution preparation problems like this. So in summary, to accurately make solutions, uh, you're going to need the volumetric flask of the proper volume for the solution that you want to make. The solutions can be made by diluting more concentrated solution, so that's one way to make a solution. If you do that, you're using M1V1 equals N2V2 to determine the volume of the stock solution that you should use, which you usually call V1. Uh, sometimes if you have a low concentration, you'll have to do a that you're making, you'll have to do a serial dilution where you dilute once, and then you take that solution and you dilute again. Uh, figuring out exactly which concentration to dilute to in the middle usually requires some trial and error, but remember the tip that I gave you that if you're doing going to a multiple of 10, that often helps, especially if you got you know 100 milliliter graduated cylinder with 10 milliliter uh, pipettes or one milliliter pipettes. Uh, then factors of 10 and 100 are really easy to get to. Finally, solutions can be made from solids. Uh, from the desired volume and uh, concentration, you convert to moles of the solute, and then you use the molar mass to determine the grams of solute you'll have to weigh out. Weigh it, put it in the flask, dissolve it, and then fill to the line and mix well. Okay. So this is some uh, guide, a guide on how to make solutions. You will be making solutions in lab, so this is kind of the paperwork practice before we do this a lot later. Uh, and uh, so again, on part two of your homework this week, there are, it starts with two serial dilution problems. Uh, so go ahead and give those a try. Uh, you may want to give those a try before the next lecture so you can kind of shake things up. I'll also point you to into the instructions uh, to some parts of the book that you could review if you want to uh, 
to learn a little more or look at a few more example problems of making solutions. Okay, that's it for the solutions video, and I'll see you in the next video, which uh, will be about stoichiometry and limiting reactants.